Yeah, hi everyone, Mr. Michael here again. Uh, the purpose of today's video is to show you how to uh, look at a pair of linear equations and determine whether they're perpendicular or parallel. Um, and also I'm going to go through some examples to find equations um, of lines that are parallel or perpendicular to other linear equations. Um, before we start though, just recapping on parallel lines. We know that parallel lines have the same gradient. So for example, I have two linear equations here, y equals 3x take 1 and y equals 3x plus 8. They both have the same gradient, uh, which is 3. Okay, so if they have the same gradient, lines are said to be parallel. Um, perpendicular lines, uh, we know perpendicular lines meet at a 90 degree angle um, as opposed to parallel, parallel lines. Uh, which are equal distance apart no matter where you look on the line. Anyway, uh, two perpendicular lines um, with gradients M1 and M2. Basically what that means is um, the gradient of the first equation and the gradient of the second equation. If we multiply them together and they equal negative 1, then they are perpendicular. Okay, And the relationship is said to be the negative reciprocal. Um, it might help if I show you graphically. Uh, that might be better. So, in fact, let's just start with a, a pair of parallel lines. So, let's just do y equals 2 over 3x plus 2. And if I come up with a line or an equation that's parallel, it must have um, a gradient of 2 over 3. So, if I type in another one, y equals um, with a gradient of 2 over 3, x plus 6, it'll be parallel. If it's uh, take 2, it's still parallel because it has that same, it still has the same gradient of 2 over 3. Okay, now uh, perpendicular to both of those lines would be a gradient of negative 3 over 2. That's the negative reciprocal. So what I'm doing is I'm flipping that fraction, so negative 3 over 2, um, x, uh, so I'm flipping the fraction and it's going from a positive to a negative um, or if it was already a negative turning it to a positive um, and you can see that that purple line is perpendicular to both of those uh, other lines that I've got there because it has um, the negative reciprocal gradient. Okay. Now again, all three of these lines are in slope-intercept form. Now slope-intercept form, um, just touching back on quickly, is when you have y by itself on the left hand side of an equation. So y is the subject and it has a coefficient of positive 1. And then you can just look at what is the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x tells you the gradient. Okay, so if you have two equations that are in slope intercept form, you can easily determine whether they're parallel because if they have the same coefficient of x, then they're parallel. If I multiply the, if they don't have it, and let's say, for example, I think they might be negative reciprocal. I can multiply those coefficients together. And if it equals negative 1, then they're perpendicular. Okay. So anyway, let's have a little look at some examples um, because they won't always be in slope-intercept form. Um, first of all, I have the equations. Let's, in fact, let's rewrite these quickly. So A, I have Y equals 1 over 2 x plus 2 and the second equation is 2y take x equals 5. Now the first um, equation, the first linear equation I'm looking at, I can see that the gradient is, so the gradient here is, well the gradient for the first equation is 1 over 2. Now is this gradient 1 over 2? It's a bit hard for me to tell at the moment because it's in standard form. So I am going to rearrange this equation to put it into slope-intercept form so it's easy to compare. Now, I do have another video which is called uh, Rearranging Linear Equations from Standard Form into Slope-Intercept Form uh, if you want some more help on how to do that. But I'll quickly go through this one again. So what I'm going to do is, because I want to keep the Y by itself on the left-hand side, I'm going to get rid of the... Uh, positive x here, so, oh, so the minus x by adding x on both sides. Excuse me, guys. So add x on both sides. 
I'm then left with 2y equals uh, x, and that's a positive 5 there, so x plus 5. And then I've got to get rid of this 2, and remember that's 2 times by y, so the opposite operation of times by is to divide. I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. And I'm going to divide, there's two terms on the right hand side, I'm going to divide both of those terms by 2, so divide this term by 2, and divide this term by 2. What's actually happening here is the coefficient of x is 1, so I'm dividing 1 by 2, which gives me a half, so y equals half x plus 5 over 2, okay, or 2.5. Now, the gradient of this line is easy to work out now because it's in slope-intercept form to the gradient of x, which in this case is 1 over 2. So gradient there is 1 over 2. And again, uh, I know that if they have the same gradient, they are parallel. So I can say, therefore, these lines are parallel. Okay, the second example I'm going to go to here is B. Again, let's rewrite those equations. So y equals minus 3x take 8, and y equals 1 over 3x plus 1. Looking at these, they're both already in slope-intercept form. You can see y is by itself on the left-hand side of the equation with the coefficient of positive 1. So I'm happy with that, it makes it easy. The gradient of both of those equations, or the, the, the value of m in the first one is minus 3, and the second one it's 1 over 3. So gradient 1, sorry guys, gradient 1 is minus 3, and gradient 2 is 1 over 3. Now, they're not the same, um, so they're not parallel, but are they perpendicular? So let's see if minus 3 times by 1 over 3 is equal to minus 1. You pop that in your calculator. I wasn't prepared, didn't have my calculator up, but I can tell you that they minus 3 times by 1 is minus 3. 1 times by 3 is 3. If I simplify that, minus 3 divided by 3, I get minus 1. So yes, um, because when I multiply the gradients together, it equals minus 1. Guys, you can do that in the calculator if you want. Um, you have two perpendicular lines. So therefore, these lines are perpendicular. Okay, now that's nice and easy. That was a nice and easy one because both were already in that slope-intercept form, okay? And that's uh, that's helpful. It's, I guess, a little bit trickier when you've got um, one line in slope-intercept form and you have to rearrange the other one. But like I said, go back and watch that other video um, or just use that one example if that um, is easy enough for you to under understand. My guys, I've put a link to that other video um, on our lesson note. So um, watch that if you need a bit more time on rearranging from standard into slope-intercept form. Okay, now um, again, my guys, probably best at this point to have a go. I won't go through that last example. Um, best at this point, probably have a go at some of the questions. I've got for you guys questions four and five today. So page 49 of your textbook, uh, deciding whether these pairs of lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay, um, once you've done that, maybe come back to the video and watch this final example to help you with question five. For the rest of us, moving on to this next example, I'm going to, hopefully, yes, um, start with question A, and I need to find the equation of a line that is parallel to y equals minus 2 take 7 and passes through points 1 and 9. So if it's parallel to y equals minus 2x take 7, I know that its gradient is going to be 
minus 2. Well, the value of m is going to be minus 2 in slope-intercept form, of course. So in the form of y equals mx plus c. So I already know that, uh, in fact, get rid of that m and pop in minus 2. I just need to work out what uh, basically the value of the constant term would be given it's passing through the coordinates 1 and 9. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the coordinates 1 and 9 into the equation. All right. Uh, so instead of y, I'm going to use the coordinate, well, sorry, the number 9. And instead of x, I'm going to use the number 1. So I'm rewriting that equation. Y, oh, sorry, not Y, 9 equals minus 2. And remember that's times by, so 1 plus C. Now, it's a matter of just working out what the value of C would be. So minus 2 times by 1 is minus 2. So 9 equals minus 2 plus C. And to get rid of that minus 2 on the right-hand side, I'm going to add 2. If I do that on the right-hand side, that's right. I need to do it on the left-hand side. I'm then left with... Sorry, guys. My laptop's being a bit slow today. So 11 is the value of the constant term, giving me the overall equation of y equals... Remember, the value of m was minus 2. Minus 2x... And we're assuming that's a positive because there's no sign in front of it, plus 11. So this is the equation of the line that is parallel to y equals minus 2x. Take 7 and we'll pass through the points 1 and 9. All right. Similar process when you're doing um, perpendicular lines, except obviously the gradient won't be the same. This time I need to find a, a line, sorry, the equation of a line that's perpendicular to y equals 3 over 4x, take 1, and passes through the points 3 and minus 2. This time I know that the value of m is going to be the negative reciprocal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that fraction. So instead of 3 over 4, it's going to be 4 over 3. And instead of a positive, it's going to be a minus. All right, so in slope-intercept form, of y equals mx plus c, my value of m is going to be minus 4 over 3. So let's go ahead and just put that in. Okay, now I've got um, two coordinates here. Again, I'm going to substitute them into the equation. So uh, sub 3 and negative 2 into the equation y equals minus 4 over 3x plus c to determine the value of c. So rewriting that equation instead of instead of y here I would have minus 2 and instead of x over here I would have positive 3. So go ahead and rewrite that equation. So minus 2 is equal to uh, minus 4 over 3 times by 3 or 3 over 1. I'm going to write them as fractions. But again, guys, you can do this on your calculator. You can just put in 3 if you want. This just makes it easier for me because I didn't organize my calculator before this video. Uh, so now I'm just going to multiply uh, these two fractions together. So minus 4 times 3 numerator times numerator gives me minus 12. 3 times 1 denominator times denominator is 3. Sorry, I forgot to put the seat in there. And add C. Uh, now, um, minus 12 over 3 or minus 12 divided by 3 can actually be simplified to minus 4. So minus 2 equals minus 4 plus c. Now, to, to solve that last step is to get rid of that minus 4, to isolate c by itself over there. 
and add four on both sides gives me minus two plus four is two equals sorry guys let me zoom out a bit more minus two equals c which gives me the overall equation of let's clean that up y equals instead of m i'm going to use minus four over three x and instead of the value of c i'm going to use positive two okay so that is the equation of a line that is perpendicular to going back to the original question y equals 3 over 4x, take one, and passes through those points. So guys, um, in, in particular my class, that'll help you with questions, um, or question five on page 50. The first few you can see there, uh, the, the parallel, um, so that first process, and the last half are asking for equations that are perpendicular to those equations. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully that helps. Again, I know it's a bit of a long video. Hopefully it all makes sense. Thanks for watching.